welcome to my channel tutor today we are going to continue with the chapter force and laws of motion so in our previous class we have already discussed about force and today we are going to discuss about laws of motion now talking about laws of motion these laws were given to us by newton and thus they are also known as newton's law of motion or newton's three laws so the first law that we have is that an object continues to be in the state of rest or in motion until unless an external force is applied to it so an object an object it continues to be in the state of rest to be in the state of rest or motion until unless an external force is applied to it now this is the law which we will be focusing on today until an external force is applied to it first of all consult your ncert the statement should be exact as it is written there for laws we use the same language that is there we do not tweak the laws we do not change the language we do not frame it according to us so you need to revise the actual statement that there is now what does this exactly means now imagine you can see this b right so imagine that this b is sitting here okay it's sitting here now just focus on this b is it moving motion is when the position of an object changes with reference to a given point with respect to time so see this b it's not moving according to my hand with respect to time right so the state of motion of this b currently is at rest now until unless so the statement says that an object object continues to be in the state of rest so it's now currently at this in the position of rest until unless an external force is applied to it now what is this external force this is my pen and i am applying a force now see the state has changed from rest which it was there at it has changed to motion thus we can say that according to newton's first law an object continues to be in the state of rest first i have explained you about the rest until unless an external force is applied to it now next let's take the case of this track and there is a car now all those who have seen my previous class must now know that i am not very good at drawing so this is my car it is moving in this direction now tell me which force must be acting on it obviously we have read about it also it's a contact force which acts in the opposite direction to the motion of the object and this force is known as frictional force so this car which is currently in motion will continue to remain in motion until unless an external force is applied now in this case for example if i need to explain this is moving like this and it stops obviously my arms are not smooth that's why it's stopping but if it was in motion it will stop because there is an external force that is a frictional force which is acting which stops this car i hope this is clear to you now as i earlier said that an object continues to be in the state of rest or in motion until unless an external force is applied to it so this tendency of an object to oppose the resistance to oppose it thus a resistance by the object is my inertia what is it it is inertia inertia now this inertia is of three type one is inertia of rest second is inertia of motion and third is the inertia of direction now you will say why am i discussing about inertia in the first law so newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia third is inertia of direction this is also known as the law of inertia and inertia it's of three type inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction now what is inertia of rest so for example i'm standing in a bus okay now the bus is in is at rest currently suddenly the driver he starts the car he starts the bus and the bus starts to move 
So my feet, they will tend to move along with the bus, but my upper part of the body, since it's at rest, so it will try to continue at rest, hence it will try to remain here and that is why I feel a backward jerk. This is my inertia of rest. Inertia of the rest is the reason why when you move, uh, when you shake a plant, the trees, they come, they fall down. Use your mind, think why it happens. Next is inertia of motion. Now I am moving in a bus. The bus is in motion. I am moving along with the uh, bus. And suddenly the driver, he applies brake. What happens? Now as soon as he applies brake, my whole body along with the bus is in a forward motion. Right? The bus is moving forward on a straight path. I am moving along with the bus. Now in that case, what happens is that my body, it tends to fall forward. Why does this happen? Because according to me, like according to the state of the motion it was in, at time 0, 0, 002 seconds, my body should be here. But the driver has applied a force, so obviously it needs to come to rest. So my body will oppose it and thus I will move forward and then will come back. This is the reason why inertia of motion is the reason why I tend to move forward. This is the reason why when you suddenly apply a brake, you tend to move forward and you wear the seat belts. Fine? Next is the inertia of direction. Now imagine I am in the same bus and the bus suddenly takes a turn. Now the bus will tend, like I am sitting like this, it's taking a right turn. So my body will tend to be here only in this direction in the, on the straight path. But the bus has moved on the right. So obviously what my body does is, it moves toward the left. This change, this opposition is inertia. One is rest, when you know the bus suddenly started. One is motion, when it suddenly stopped. And one is direction in which you take a turn or anything like that. That is, this is the reason why you have mud guards at the base. This is the reason why you, the long jump uh, people, the long jumpers, they tend to run a long distance and then you know they take a jump and because of the inertia of motion their body tends to carry for them forward a long path. I hope this is clear to you. Now this inertia is also related with the mass. Now you will say how is this related to mass? So inertia is basically the mass that, that an object has. Let me see like I have a ball which has a weight of 5 kg and I have another ball of mass 2 kg. Fine? Right? So now in which of them do you think that the inertia, the resistance is same for all the objects? No, it's not same. It depends on the mass of the body. So now here yeah, this body is of 5 kg and this body is of 2 kg. If both the bodies are at rest and I need to push them, I need to change the state of rest to motion, I will be applying more force in which case obviously in this one why am i applying more force or why is it uh, resisting it more obviously that means it is resisting the change more so that means the inertia is more so why is the inertia more in this case and less in this case this is because this has more mass as compared to this one so inertia is basically directly proportional to the mass more is the, in mass of an object more is the inertia that it will have this is the reason why you need to apply more force when you are pushing a, a, a when you are pushing an almira as compared to when you are pushing a jug. That is because the mass of the of the almira is more as compared to that of the jug. I hope this thing is clear to you. In the next class, we will be dis uh, discussing about Newton's second law, and also we will be doing a proof. If you have any doubt, please write in the comment section. If you uh, feel there should be something uh, new that we need to learn or anything related to this, please write in the comment section. Thank you so much for your time and patience. Have a good day. Bye.